Hi, my name's Micah and I practiced dental hygiene for four and a half years. I'm all too familiar with patients who come in with a fear of the dentist. Most often our fear stems from the unknown and in dentistry, that's no different. When you show up to your dental appointment, the first thing you'll do is have a seat in an operatory and you may see a tray of instruments that looks something like this. And your first thought may be, Ooh, what are they gonna do with those? Well, in today's segment, I hope to alleviate fear by reviewing some of the most common dental instruments in a hygiene kit. The most common and probably the least scary dental instrument is the dental mirror. We primarily use the mirror for retraction and indirect vision. So I have a mouth model here to help demonstrate what I mean by that. By retraction, I simply mean we're gonna use the mirror to help pull back the cheeks for better access to areas that are hard to reach. And by indirect vision, I mean that when we talk about the surfaces of teeth, we think of them as what we can see directly and indirectly. So if I were to smile at you like this, you would directly be able to see the front side of my teeth, but you wouldn't be able to see the back side of my teeth directly. And if you tried to do so, you might end up looking something like this. And as a practicing clinician, working like that would really hurt my neck over time. So we use the mouth mirror to see surfaces that we wouldn't be able to see directly, and we call that indirect vision. Before we go any further, I think it's important to note here that in their most basic categories, dental and dental hygiene instruments can be broken into two main categories, which are assessment instruments and treatment instruments. The assessment instrument that you may be the most familiar with is the dental explorer. The dental explorer is used to check for defects in hard tissue and around restorations. So my mouth model here doesn't have any restorations, but if he did, such as um, crowns or fillings, we would be able to use the explorer around those restorations and feel if there were any gaps between the restoration and the natural tooth structure, or if it was loose, things of that nature. When we're using the Explorer to check on the natural tooth structure, one of the most common things that we're looking for is dental decay. And a frequent place that patients experience this is in the pits and fissures of your teeth. So during an exam, you may feel your dentist or your hygienist using the tip of the Explorer to fill in those grooves. And if they get to a sticky spot, unfortunately, that most likely means there's a cavity in that area. Fun fact, the enamel on your teeth is the hardest substance in the human body. In my opinion, the second most common assessment instrument is the periodontal probe. This one may be a little bit more difficult for you to see, so let's insert a close-up picture here. You may notice that the periodontal probe has millimeter markings on it. That's because this instrument is a small measuring device used to evaluate the bone levels and tissue health surrounding each tooth. Now, the probe may look like a pokey instrument, but really it's rounded on the end. And so if your tissues are healthy, there should be no discomfort when this assessment is being performed. This is how it works. So we've got our mouth model here and what your provider will do is use this instrument to just barely slide up underneath that gum line and walk around and we'll record those measurements. Anything that is one to three millimeters is considered healthy. And anything deeper than that is when it's gonna be indicated that our patients are experiencing some gingivitis or periodontitis. Moving on to dental hygiene treatment instruments. Dental hygiene treatment instruments are used to remove plaque and calculus buildup. The reason why we wanna remove these things is because it's primarily composed of bacteria. And if left for long periods of time, that bacteria would inevitably cause cavities and gum disease. Treatment instruments can be further categorized into two groups, sickle scalers and curettes. The primary difference between these two groups is the shape of their tips, which can be seen in a cross-section image like the one here. As you can see, the sickle scalers have a triangular tip, whereas the curettes have a half circle or an, an a rounded back. Because of this, the sickle scalers are not intended to go underneath the gum line when being used. 
However, the curettes are to, meant to be used subjunctively underneath the gum line to really help clean out that plaque and calculus buildup. The instruments that I've reviewed today are the ones that I keep in my personal dental hygiene kit. However, when you walk into the operatory of your dental hygienist, he or she may have instruments that look a little bit different. Primarily, you'll see this with the curettes. That's because the curettes are often designed to be used on a specific surface of a specific tooth. For instance, certain curettes are used only on the anterior teeth or from canine to canine, while other curettes, the bends in them are meant to be used on posterior teeth or anything behind the canine. This doesn't make them more scary. It simply means that they're designed to reach a specific tooth or a specific surface to make your hygienist the most effective. If you're someone who experiences dental anxiety, I hope after this segment, you can go into your next dental hygiene appointment at peace with the basic knowledge of the dental hygiene instruments. Please know that as providers, it is our goal to treat you with kindness, gentleness, and help you achieve amazing oral health. If you've enjoyed this segment, we'd love for you to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel here at Burst TV.